This lecture is going to cover an overview of photosynthesis. So I've redrawn that cycle we drew in one of the other videos showing the connection between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, the inputs and outputs um, uh, of both those parts of the cycle. So we're going to focus on this part here, the top of photosynthesis right now. So um, looking at photosynthesis, I'll keep this in the corner for reference, as a whole, one of the things you need to remember is where this is occurring. So in plants, at least, it occurs in the green parts of the plant, so primarily leaves, but, but also sometimes stems that are adapted to different environments, like a cactus, for example. Uh, so we can see here that we have the leaf, then we zoom down. So in the leaf, when we cut it open and look on the side, or look to the inside, there are cells filling the inside called um, the mesophyll. So those are the cells that are the green colored cells. They're made in the cells and then transported into the vein. The water would be transported from the vein to the um, plant cells. Uh, then the gas is exchanged here. CO2 is going to go in. Oxygen comes out um, for photosynthesis through these little pores called stomata. So a single pore is a stoma. Stomata is plural. And you can see they have little cells on the outside that can open and close to keep more water in or more water out of the plant, depending on the conditions it finds itself in. Zooming in on a single mesophyll cell, this is what it would look like. Um, and you can see all the round green parts. Those are all chloroplasts. And so that's what we have here. Inside the chloroplast, there are additional structures that we're going to draw and label in a minute. So that's the basic setup of photosynthesis. And remember, overall, it's taking light energy to chemical energy of food. And we see that here, light energy to chemical energy of food. So let's start by looking at chloroplast structure in more detail. A chloroplast is a double membraned organelle. It has the outer membrane, it has the inner, inner membrane, and it has the intermembrane space. membrane space. Then um, we should note that the outer membrane came from when the original photosynthetic bacterium was engulfed by the eukaryotic cell. We can actually see evidence of that in the composition of that outer membrane. Then inside the chloroplasts, I'm going to draw these discs stacked up like poker chips. I'm drawing them on green on purpose because they are the part of the chloroplast that makes it look green. They contain pigments in their uh, membranes called chlorophyll, as well as other kinds of pigments, carotenoids. And if we look at them, one whole stack is called a granum. The plural of that is grana. Each little disc itself is called a thylakoid, meaning sac in Greek. The inside of the thylakoid, not surprisingly, is called the thylakoid space. And the membrane of the thylakoid is called the thylakoid membrane. The fluid that we have outside the thylakoids is called the stroma. Sort of think of that as the fluid filled empty space. And of course, it's full of diffusing particles all over the place, um, but we'll say that. So the stroma's on the outside of the thylakoids. So that's pretty much what our chloroplast looks like. I'll put that over here for reference. Uh, if we look at it um, in um, a transmission electron micrograph, we see that these are the stacks. These are the, um, it's the granum, and each little disc is a thylakoid, and you can see that they're connected together. This whole thing is the chloroplast. It's a slice through it. All right, let's draw a chloroplast, and we're going to see the two stages of photosynthesis and what comes in and out of each. Now, the nice thing is that only one reactant goes into each stage overall, and one product comes out of each stage overall. So the first thing I need to do is to draw my granum, stack of thylakoids. I'm going to leave the other side open right now for a cycle, which I'll draw over here. 
We know one of the things going into the photosynthetic process is our light energy. So when I draw my light energy, I'm going to have it getting captured by the pigments in the thylakoid membranes. So that includes chlorophyll and the carotenoid pigments as well. So that's an input into this side. And this side, we actually, because it depends on light directly, we call it the light reactions. In the light reactions, that's actually when we have our water coming in. You can see water is the input, which means if we track it, oxygen is the output. Then we go to our other stage, and our other reactant is CO2. So that's what's coming into this cycle. And our output is our carbon compound, our food. So the nice thing is here that all the C's go together, the carbon compound, the CO2, of course the carbon has to come from somewhere, and then the Calvin cycle. So that's the way you can remember it, is that it's all the C's. Calvin cycle, carbon compound, carbon dioxide. The function of the Calvin cycle is to embed electrons in a carbon compound. That's going to make it highly energetic, and that means that it can be used to be broken down later and release a lot of energy. So we're going to embed electrons in the carbon compound. The purpose of the light reactions is going to be to make molecules to run the Calvin cycle. And we'll say using light energy. So that means the light energy needs to get turned into some other type of energy molecule, and we're going to use our very typical energy molecule here. We're going to make some ATP. That's going to carry the energy over to the Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle needs energy because you'll notice that it's building, which means that it's an endergonic process, which means that it needs energy to occur. It's anabolic. So to get that energy over, we convert light energy into ATP, chemical energy. When ATP drops off and its energy is used up, it's because it's gotten broken in half. So we'll have ADP, diphosphate, plus a phosphate, loose, and that'll go back to get put back together in the light reactions. Additionally, you notice that we need electrons. We're embedding electrons in the carbon compound. So in order to do that, we need to get those electrons from somewhere. Turns out water is the donor of the electrons. So water's purpose is being an electron source. And those electrons are carried by a shuttle. This shuttle's name is NADPH. It's going to have two electrons in it drops those electrons off and comes back to pick up more in the form of NADP plus plus the hydrogen that dropped off. So this is the empty cab on the top coming back and the full one on the bottom. So this is NAD NADP plus. You can remember the P's, they actually stands for phosphate, but the P's go into photosynthesis. We're going to have a different molecule in cellular respiration that's pretty similar, but the phosphate is photosynthesis. So those electrons get embedded in the carbon compound being made, the energy is used to do that. So really, just to note that our CO2 is the carbon source to build our food. So overall, that's the ins and outs of the two stages of photosynthesis, the light reactions and the Calvin cycle, and what cycles between the two in order to allow the carbon compound to be built using originally the light energy electrons from water, put those electrons in the carbon compound, use the light energy to make ATP, put that energy into building the carbon compound. The carbon comes from the carbon source, and there's recycling of molecules between the two stages.